What is up guys, Code Rush 29 is back with a brand new video. In today's video, we are looking at uh, Wait for Child and Find First Child in Roblox Studio, which is a very important part to our beginner scripting series, and you are not going to want to miss this. Um, so make sure you're subscribed and click that notification bell, and be sure to leave a like on the video. Um, and yeah, so that you will be, well, not the like part, but so that you will be notified whenever um, I come out with a new video. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. And yes, I fixed my mic for this video. It's actually working. Hooray. Um, okay, <laughs> so uh, what is Find vs. Child and Wait for Child? So as you probably noticed, I've kind of stopped the um, slides because we're at a point where it's um, a little unnecessary for the slides because they're pretty simple to explain. Um, and this is kind of the same thing. So what are what are children and parents? So we kind of went over this. A child, or let's do parent first. A parent is whatever something is inside of. So if we make a part, right, and we let's just name this part child example doesn't matter this is just an example you don't have to do this the parent we can scroll down we can see the parents the workspace because that is what this is inside of okay so the parent is the workspace the child example its parent is the workspace because that's what it's inside of and child example is a child of the workspace so some something that's inside of the workspace this or let's just call this um example part so it's not so uh, so it's not super um uh, confusing uh example part is a child of the workspace because it's inside of the workspace so when we're doing find for child and wait for child we are looking for children okay we are looking for um the children of a certain item model etc so uh, why do we want to use find for child, uh, find first child, or wait for child? So, for example, you, there are a lot of obbies with um, like uh, lava parts, right? And you step on the lava, and your Roblox character dies. Um, for this, we need to s see if they're a player, and we can do that by using uh, find first child and wait for child. So it's super helpful in that way. So let's just go ahead and do that first. Let's make a new part and change its color to like really red. It really doesn't matter, but oh, that is not really red. <laughs> uh, there we go. And then we can just scale it up and scale it over here, right? So we've made this little like lava zone and now we're gonna just quickly make some little stepping stones. I'm gonna make these like a grayish color. Uh, oh gosh, I need that one. There we go. And we can just scale these up a little bit, duplicate it by hitting Control D or Command D, moving it over here making it a realistic jump, of course, uh, over here. And obviously this is an obby, so you're gonna need to test it out to make sure it's actually realistic, but that looks okay. And then I'm gonna scale it over on this head because we don't want them to be able to jump from over here onto the, we want them to have to go right through, okay? So these are all fine, but let's just make sure everything here is anchored. We talked about anchoring. It just makes it stay so that when a player hops on it, basically it's not gonna move. And then let's go ahead and drag over all of this and hit control G to make a model. So now this is a model and we can call this uh, lava jump. Okay. Perfect. So let's get right into the scripting because we want to script the lava. When you step on it, your character dies. So let's find our lava part, right? We're going to name this lava part. Um, this is where it's helpful to name your parts um, that you put here like this. It's helpful to name them because I have a bad habit of not naming them, um, and it's hard to find what you're looking for. But here's our lava part. We can insert a script in here, delete this print hello world, and we're going to uh, run an event, all right? So not a remote event, just a regular event. We can say script.parent, so the lava part, um, dot touched. So here's another event, dot touched. This will happen whenever a player touches the, um, the brick, okay? So we can say colon connect function so when sorry not whenever a player when anything touches the lava part this will happen and there's also a built-in parameter called hit or uh hit it really doesn't matter what you call it this is the built-in parameter and this right here is just whatever touched the um part okay and we could say if hit dot name equals equals and then put your username there but what if you want any player like you can't you can't do that we need to just check and see if is it a player or is it something else is it just one of these steps right is it just one of these gray steps um so to do that we can just say um if hit 
dot parent so let me explain that uh well first let's just do this if hit dot parent colon find first child whoop, first child this is how you have to write it out capital f capital f capital c parentheses quotation mark humanoid then print uh a player has touched the lava part so why are we doing this this is just saying let me just quickly explain i'm going to go into my plugins and i'm going to go ahead and create a rig a block rig is fine um so you a humanoid is something inside of a, every single player in roblox has a humanoid okay and this is something that very few things have only pretty much only a player and an npc have a humanoid so that is why we're checking to see if there if we find a humanoid inside of the player okay so we're checking to see that because only players and npcs pretty much have uh humanoids okay uh, it's just basically a quick way to check and see if the thing that touches is actually a player. And why are we saying hit dot parent? So usually when when they would fall, right? It's not the model that's touching this, okay? It is in this case their let's see, uh, their there you go. Maybe their right foot touched the lava. So their right foot just touched the lava, but we want that to. Uh, kill them because they touch the lava, right? So why we're saying dot parent because we're saying what touched it, which is the right foot dot parent. So what it's inside of, which is the character. And then if if we find inside of the character, if we find a child called humanoid, then we know it's going to be a player because all players have humanoids. All right. So it's a quick way to check and see if the thing that touched the brick is a humanoid. So let's go ahead and uh, test it. We can hit play, and we're just going to see if it prints a player has touched the brick. Okay, oh, we have, I guess I spawned on, yep, I spawned on the lava part. Oh, it's this guy. So, yeah, like I said, NPCs do have humanoids, okay? So, that's the other thing you can check to see if they're an NPC. I'm just going to move these guys out of the way because they're in the way. Um, but as you can see, if we walk on here, it's going to say a player has touched the lava part. Get out, NPC. You're ruining this. <laughs> but if we go onto the server, get out of here. <laughs> okay. Um, we can insert a part here and it is obviously touching the lava, but we're not getting a player has touched the part anymore. Those are the only, because it's only printing when a player or an NPC has touched it because it has a humanoid inside of it. So that's a pretty quick example of that. Uh, let's go ahead and script it so that it actually kills the player, though, because we want that when we're making an obby, right? So we can say, um, then then we're going to say hit dot parent, all right? So the dot humanoid. So we're going to find their humanoid, okay? Right? Because in a player, I already showed you... Um, we're going to take whatever hit it and then we're going to find the parent which is the player character and then we're going to find the humanoid inside of the player so i'm going to once again insert one more block rig to show you so we're we found this oh we found their foot right here and then we went into their character and found the humanoid okay because we we already know that the character has a humanoid that's why we can just say hit dot parent dot humanoid and then we can say dot health because that's a property of the humanoid. Uh, it's over, it's right uh, somewhere. Uh, it's right here. Health is 100. So we can say dot health equals zero. So zero. <laughs> so we can set their health to zero, which will automatically kill them. Okay. So um, that will actually that will kill the character that touches the lava um so we can be doing it's actually going to kill the soldier um because the soldier's on top of it um as you'll see in a second uh the soldier. oh and we died because the soldier oh the soldiers died as well um but we died because we touched the lava and we did again um so if you're having this <laughs> issue um you can just like rotate it and move it so that when you spawn it won't be like right there but i just want to show you that this actually works right it's pretty it's 
not too hard to understand, uh, but it can can be confusing. So uh, let me show you really quickly that this works. Well, we already saw it. It kills me. Oh, I touched the lava, and now we respawn, okay? So another thing you can do, so what if we don't want to use uh, find first child? Maybe I'm just going to comment this out to show you. If you had just said hit dot parent dot humanoid dot health equals zero we're gonna get watch this watch this so it will work when i touch it right um let me just show you but it's gonna load the output with errors because humanoid there is no humanoid in all of these parts right it's gonna kill me but look there's look it's gonna load the to or the output with um with errors because we it some of these parts don't have humanoids and so it's gonna kind of lag the game because the the script is confused um so that's why we want to use find first child so we're only going to do this if we know that the character has a humanoid so that is find first child but what is wait for child so they are very very similar um but you want to use wait for child when you start the game up okay um so we're going wait for child is the same exact thing as find first child except we are waiting until that uh, appears so let me show you what i mean let's go ahead and insert a script into server script service and i'm going to call this script wait for child so let's go ahead and try this we're going to try and wait for their character so we're going to say game dot players dot player added right we've already done this before colon connect function okay and then we can say player okay and we're gonna wait for their character so how we can do that is by saying game let's just say local character equals game dot workspace colon wait for child player dot name so we're waiting we're having the script wait until we find the player so um we're waiting until we've found the character so we're saying because the character is always going to be in the workspace the player itself is going to be in the players folder but we're waiting for a child of the workspace so we're waiting for something to appear in the workspace with the player's name and that's going to be their character okay unless you have npcs um so that's going to be that and um the reason we want to use wait for child is because it, it's going to take a second before we uh before the script finds the child so because for example if we try to um if we don't use oh we have a little bit of an error on workspace what that doesn't make sense i think it's just my lag um <laughs> in recording this like I've said before, my computer does not like it when I um, cr uh, when I record and uh, and do studio at the same time. Um, so we're waiting for the player because we're waiting for something inside of the workspace to come up with the name of the player, and that is their character. Okay, I hope that makes sense. But if we had just said colon find first child, right, and said character dot humanoid dot health equals zero because we're finding their humanoid and setting their health value to zero so they're fully out of health we're gonna not it's not gonna work because all of a sudden we, it's gonna say something like this you're gonna get you're just gonna get errors because um it's going to it's gonna uh, how do I put this? It's It takes a little bit for the character to load in. So whenever you're dealing with characters or anything in general, unless if it's something at the very start of the game, then you're going to want to wait for child. So if you have like a uh, remote event, right, remote event, and we're going to name this, um, uh, let's just name this get a job, then, and we want this to be a, um, a variable we're gonna want to say local uh, get a job equals game dot replicated storage colon wait for child get a job instead of find first child because it's at the very start of the game that this is gonna happen and it's gonna take it could take a second to get loaded in um, and it's it's just a way to make sure that you um, that there are no errors um, because you want to make sure that everything is loaded in so use wait for child 
if it's a script and you're using it at the beginning of the game, so this is going to happen at the beginning, when the server starts, right, when your game is first opened, and if it's not, if it's just sometime in the game, like with a lava part uh, or, or something like that, then you can use find first child. So we're, we're using this right here, the if hit.parent colon find first child to check if it's a player. That's basically what you want to do. Um, that's what I use find first child for a ton. Remember this. If hit.parent colon find first child humanoid, then. So we're checking to see if it has a humanoid. If it has a humanoid, it is either a player or an NPC or something that you put a humanoid in for some random reason. Okay? So I hope that uh, was helpful and made sense. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe, click that notification bell, and leave a like on the video. Um, also, I put up a post on my community tab. Go ahead, click the link in the top right corner. Um, that is... You can leave your ideas for games because in a week we are going to create a game from everything we've learned, um, you, hopefully using everything we learned. So if you want to create a big obby or maybe a sim simulator of some sort, um, leave that in the com as a comment in the um, in the uh, post and be sure to like any comments that you think would be cool because it gives it a higher chance of actually happening. Um, so I, uh, and yeah, we will be hopefully doing that very soon. I believe that should be next week as long as everything uh, goes well. And um, other than that, thank you for watching, and I hope this was helpful. And, oh, one more thing. if you, When you're th uh, putting your requests down for what game to make, make sure it's beginner-friendly, right? This is a beginner scripting series, so... We want to keep this beginner friendly, right? Um, it, we're not going to be making a big adopt me game um, because that is not anywhere near a beginner game. Um, all right. So yeah, sorry. I'm, I like to mess around with the screen while I'm talking. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, again, make sure to subscribe and I will see you next week.